What is the role of hepcidin in human physiology? It has been long considered the master regulator of iron homeostasis. Hepcidin functions to inhibit iron from entering circulation by binding ferroportin, the only transporter known to shuttle iron out of storage cells. This action effectively traps dietary iron in the duodenum, recycled iron from senescent red blood cells in macrophages, and the principal site of iron storage, hepatocytes. The regulation of hepcidin expression is complex, combining iron homeostasis, erythropoietic demand, and nutritional immunity. When plasma iron levels are high, hepcidin expression increases, which stops more iron from entering circulation, preventing a state of iron overload that could lead to the formation of reactive oxygen species. In the opposite scenario, when plasma iron is low, hepcidin expression is suppressed, leading to an increase in iron entering circulation. In states of high erythropoietic demand, brought on by blood loss or hypoxia, hepcidin is downregulated, allowing iron to flow to the bone marrow compartment for incorporation into new red blood cells. Iron is essential for all life, including pathogenic organisms. As such, a mechanism was developed to starve invading pathogens from utilizing the body's iron in a process called nutritional immunity. When the body senses the presence of a pathogen, hepcidin is highly upregulated, locking away the body's iron supply. Structurally, hepcidin is a small cationic peptide of the defensin family compacted by four disulfide bridges. It is principally expressed in the liver, but localized production does occur in other tissues like the heart and brain. Physiologically, hepcidin can predict iron deficiency anemia, as well as non-anemic iron deficiency. And, the route of iron supplementation can be predicted by indicating a patient's responsiveness to oral iron. As we mentioned, when hepcidin levels decrease, plasma iron levels increase. And when hepcidin levels increase, plasma iron levels decrease. Normal iron homeostasis is achieved when there is a balance of appropriate levels of plasma iron and hepcidin for physiological needs. However, when hepcidin regulation is disrupted, iron-related diseases occur. Inappropriately low hepcidin levels lead to toxic iron overload, including diseases such as hereditary hemochromatosis, iron-loading anemias, and chronic liver disease. On the other side, when hepcidin is inappropriately high, Iron-restrictive anemias develop, including anemia of inflammation, anemia of renal failure, irida, and anemia of hepcidin-secreting tumors. As we see here, many factors can contribute to hepcidin regulation, but generally fall into a few categories. 1. Iron levels. Whether additional iron is introduced into the body, or iron stores are satisfactory. 2. Inflammation. Whether it's an infectious disease, or organ dysfunction. 3. Erythropoiesis, whether it's due to too few red blood cells or oxygen demand, the stimulation of erythropoiesis, or transfusing the product of erythropoiesis, red blood cells. Under hemostatic conditions, iron flows from the liver, macrophages, and gut duodenal cells into the plasma, replenishing the iron pool. This is then used by the bone marrow to produce red blood cells. When a hepcidin agonist is detected by the body, the liver upregulates production of the hepcidin peptide. Hepcidin binds to ferroportin, effectively shutting the gate to the body's iron supply. As a result, iron no longer enters circulation, causing the available plasma iron pool to shrink, as the remaining iron is rapidly consumed in the bone marrow and taken up by the liver. Once the available iron is used up, Iron-restricted erythropoiesis becomes stressed, causing a reduction in the number of new, mature red blood cells. As the master regulator of iron homeostasis, hepcidin levels can predict iron deficiency in non-anemic patients before hemoglobin dips below the anemic threshold. While the prevalence of non-anemic iron deficiency is hard to estimate, there are approximately 23.4 million Americans living with anemia a number underrepresenting the iron-deficient population in the U.S. The upregulation of hepcidin during states of inflammation is responsible for anemia of inflammation. As such, its levels can distinguish between iron-deficiency anemia, low hepcidin, 
and anemia of inflammation, high hepcidin. Unregulated iron can cause the formation of radical oxygen species, ROS, that lead to tissue damage. After trauma, seen post-surgery or in critical care, hepcidin levels can predict the onset of acute kidney injury, AKI. Higher hepcidin locks away iron, protecting the body from the creation of ROS. Therefore, it may be important to ensure hepcidin levels are above a certain threshold before a surgery to minimize the risk of AKI post-surgery. Iron deficiency is difficult to diagnose with concomitant inflammation, as seen in critical care due to the fact that ferritin is an acute phase reactant and no longer reflects iron availability. However, using hepcidin to define iron deficiency has been shown to predict mortality after critical care discharge. Similar to the risk of AKI post-surgery, hepcidin's action to sequester iron from invading pathogens has predictive value for the 28-day mortality in septic patients. Hepcidin's role in controlling ferroportin expression effectively regulates iron absorption from the gut. As such, hepcidin can predict the responsiveness to oral iron, which provides clinicians a decision point to prescribe oral iron, a cheap, non-invasive option, or require intravenous iron administration. With the high prevalence of anemia in the U.S., iron deficiency is a common issue seen by general practitioners. In order to restore patient iron levels, a doctor may prescribe oral iron pills or intravenous iron infusion. Iron pills are cheap but can cause gastrointestinal distress, leading to poor patient compliance and failure to metabolize if not readily absorbed by the gut. While IV iron is effective, it is much more costly and requires separate hospital visits to administer the infusion. Hepcidin levels can predict the effectiveness of oral iron pills due to its role in controlling iron absorption from the gut. If hepcidin is low, oral iron pills will be sufficiently absorbed to correct the deficiency. However, if the levels are elevated, oral iron will not be effective, requiring the administration of IV iron treatment. In this way, hepcidin can save patients money if they are known to be responsive to oral iron pills. Or it can save time by preventing a failed attempt to take iron pills and direct treatment to IV iron. Iron plays a major role in the systemic organ failure associated with sepsis. As tissue is damaged by infection and the subsequent overactive immune response, iron is released beyond a level the body can control. This leads to the presence of catalytic free iron, which then causes the formation of reactive oxygen species. The oxidative damage to cell membranes that ensues cause further tissue damage, creating a spiraling condition eventually leading to multi-system organ failure. With hepcidin's role in sequestering iron in conditions of inflammation and iron overload, it may serve as an early acute phase marker of sepsis. A clinical utility in practice can be summarized with an assessment of normocytic or microcytic anemia. In this case, iron studies are the current standard of care. Low iron, high total iron binding content, or TIBC, and low ferritin, is predictive of iron deficiency. Low iron with normal or low TIBC and normal to high ferritin yields a diagnosis of anemia of chronic disease. Normal to high iron with any TIBC and normal to high ferritin has two possible outcomes. First, it could be indicative of iron overload, as in the case of sideroblastic anemia. Alternatively, if the red blood cells have a teardrop shape or splenomegaly is present, the patient likely has some form of thalassemia. Hepcidin is being evaluated for incorporation into the diagnostic tree and may, in fact, replace ferritin altogether. The intrinsic hepcidin diagnostic has also been issued a CPT code for Medicare reimbursement. Hepcidin can replace the basic indication granted by ferritin due to the high degree of correlation between hepcidin and ferritin. Beyond the correlation of hepcidin and ferritin, here are other principles of hepcidin physiology. In healthy donors, hepcidin levels are higher in men than in women. Hepcidin can stratify patients by iron status. When hepcidin is low, the patient iron status is low. As hepcidin increases, so does the iron status. Proper diagnosis is the key to improving care and avoiding morbidity in patients at risk from iron-related conditions. Hepcidin, 
the master regulator of iron homeostasis, can shed light on a number of those conditions, including iron deficiency, anemia of chronic disease, hereditary iron regulatory conditions, and a wide range of inflammatory or infectious agents. Clinicians can have patient samples tested by Intrinsic DX, the only CAP-accredited CLIA-certified laboratory to run a clinical immunoassay for human hepcidin. The assay characteristics and physiological validation was described in this peer-reviewed article. The authors demonstrated the ability of hepcidin to identify patients with iron deficiency even before the onset of anemia. This highlights yet another advantage of measuring hepcidin levels in preventative medical care. Visit www.intrinsicdx.com for more information. Links to these references can be found in the description below or on the Intrinsic Life Sciences website.